All right, guys, I wanna to talk to y'all about how I clean my AR-15 after a hunt. Uh, me and Tyler went out to East Texas and hooked up with our good friend Joey from Thermo Outfitters and his son Carson. We killed 23 to 26 pigs before midnight. It was epic, we had a great time. As soon as we got out of the truck, we were on pigs. We went to the next pasture. Just a group of pigs just left and right. We had a good time, uh, but we were shooting suppressed. Guys, when I shoot suppressed, I pay attention to my rifle when I get home. As soon as I get home, not that night, but the next day, uh, I will get to cleaning my rifle. Uh, there's a lot of great videos out there on how to clean your AR-15 or any, any, any firearm, uh, but some of them I feel like go a little too far. Um, and I think most of that cleaning is unnecessary and it kind of gets people uh, intimidated you know, for the guys that are doing it for the first time. Uh, so I just want to show you guys what I do. I'm not saying this is the way to do it, okay? Uh, but this is what I do, especially when I shoot suppress. When I'm shooting without a suppressor, I rarely touch these rifles. I rarely touch them. Uh, they don't get as dirty as the uh, suppressed rigs, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. This right here are two magazines. They're both the same mags and the same type of ammunition, okay? And this is, was the mag that was in my back pocket and this was the mag that was uh, the last mag that I ran. And hopefully I can get it to focus. But uh, as you can see, it's nice and clean here on the bottom. And the upper mag is the last round I had. And you can see how nasty it is. This was the last <laughs> round. And that stuff just blows in there. It, it, I call it blowback. And uh, it just, it stays in the barrel. It gets all over your bolt pier group. It gets in your mag well. It gets in your trigger group. And it gets all the way down into your magazine and covers your ammunition. It's it's pretty nasty. You're gonna be okay shooting like that for a certain amount of time, and then eventually uh, you will run into an issue, and that's gonna start with your bulk carry group. Uh, I got buddies that just refuse to pay attention to this type of stuff, and then they run into issues in the field, and they're just scratching their head like, man, I just, I just bought this $1,800 rifle, it should be running no matter what. That's false. If you don't pay attention to this bulk carry group right here, you will run into problems. You gotta take care of this. This is. This is the heart of your rifle right here. And I just wanna show you guys real quick what I do. This, this one's already been cleaned. Uh, it's a little dirty, but I don't, I don't really get 100% of that stuff off of there. I just want it to get clean, clean enough. <laughs> all right, so rig's clear, all right? We don't want the range masters jumping on us. All right. And this is a piston rig for the folks that don't know. Uh, I've already posted up several videos on how this, this setup is. Um, I will completely break down the bulk carry group. Fortunately for me, uh, the finish that PWS has, um, it keeps me from using any type of solvents. I, I can just get a rag, and this was the actual rag that I used, and you can see how nasty it is. I just get just old t-shirt and I just cut cut the sleeves off old t-shirts and just use it. Uh, and I mean, that's a clean one and a dirty one, all right? This is from the other night. Uh, but I will completely break this down. I'm not gonna do it here in the video because I don't wanna drag it out. Uh, you just take the charge and handle off there. This is no different than your standard bolt carry group, uh, but it's a little different, okay? Because it's a piston and PWS has a spring assisted bolt. Oh, love that, man. That's, I think that helps with the reliability out of this 762 by 39, 100%. That right there. Just awesome. Uh, but it's a great finish to it. All I got to do is just wipe it off. I'll clean it real good with the brush. I'll scrub it a little bit, get that crap off the bolt, and then I will lube it up. Guys, there's tons of cleaners out there. I'm not even gonna get into this debate. I know what's out there. I know some are better than the others, you know? It all comes down to what you wanna use, you know? It's just, it's no different than taking a shower. We all have different types of soaps, you know? Uh, but I use Frog Lube, okay? They have their solvent, which I rarely use, uh, but their lube is what I pay attention to the most. They have an extreme, which is a, a liquid form, and then they have the paste. And I use this paste religiously, like this is my second one. And I use this paste and I'll just get that paste on my fingers. I'll rub it down on the bowl, get all the, the, the point of contacts. So if you see, if you see, and I might be able to show it here in the video, um, you can see where there's, there's points of contact, okay? We got points of contact right here 
anywhere where there's some type of wear. That's a, that's a point of contact, point of contact, point of contact up here, right in front of the key, point of contact here on the side, you know. I'll put a little bit here, a little bit of pace here along the bolt on the back side, and that's it. That's all I do. Uh, the barrel. I would run a boar snake. I would run a boar snake. You can get this at Academy. Uh, this is a 30 cal boar snake. So you got to pay attention to what caliber you have and buy the correct boar snake. This is a 30 cal. It has a little copper or brass fitting here at the end. I don't know what the hell that is. And uh, it keeps you from scratching up your rifling. And then about a quarter way down the road, you have a brush wire part right here. That I don't know exactly what it's for, to be honest with you, because it's a little bit more narrow than the actual rope. I guess if there's any type of debris in there, it'll grab it, or right up at the, uh, the feed ramp, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but I'm gonna run it down the barrel. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna start from the muzzle end. You wanna start from the chamber end and get that stuff out. And I would do this, I would do this two to three times, and I'll run that down that barrel two to three times. I learned from a precision shooter years ago. This was probably about nine or 10 years ago. And uh, I was at the range shooting. I had an HS Precision at that time. I, I want to say it was an HS Precision HTR. And uh, that rifle was shooting good, man. It was a tack driver, just shooting, shooting, shooting. And uh, I said, man, I'm ready to go home, get this thing cleaned up, and get it ready for this hunt. And uh, he, he just wanted to know, hey, how do you clean your rifle? And I told him. And I said, man, I got this foam. It's awesome. You just spray it down in the barrel, and the foam's up, and you can get that. And he says, whoa, don't do that. Don't do that. And I was like, what? Well, what do you mean? You want your barrel to foul up, okay? Um, you have a rifling. If you look down your rifle, you, your barrel, you will see where it just swirls. You have a rifling, and you want that rifling to foul up. That's what's gonna hold, it's gonna help you hold your accuracy. You got guys that go to the range, especially, I see this all the time before deer season. You got these guys at the range, and they're just shooting. These guys shoot maybe five, six rounds a year out of this bolt gun. And they're down there and they're shooting, they got this rifle shooting really good, and they go home and they clean it. And when I'm talking about cleaning, they completely detail this rifle and they get all that good stuff out of their rifling, out of their barrel, they get it completely cleaned out. They get into position to take the shot on this animal and they miss and they blame it on buck fever, they blame it on their scope, they blame it on ammunition. They find every reason in the book, but at the end of the day, it was, the way they clean their rifle. And I ask everybody, man, how do you clean your rifle? And, and I tell them, don't do that, man. Let your rifle get fouled up. I know every once in a while it's good to clean it really good, uh, but if you wanna hold your accuracy and you don't wanna be that guy with that story, let that rifle foul up. Let that rifle foul up. That's just me. Uh, and that's what I learned and I've had zero issues with accuracy with these rifles. It is unnecessary for you to take the rail off, take your optic off, completely disassemble your trigger group. Guys, I've had this rifle for two and a half years and this trigger has been out one time. And the only reason I took it out was just to inspect it. That was it. And I put it right back in there. I put it right back in there. I've never taken this buffer tube out, uh, this buffer spring out of the buffer tube. Uh, I've never taken that buffer spring out of that tube. So these rifles run and they run really good, but you gotta pay attention to this right here. This is your bolt carry group. This is the heart of your rifle. And if you don't pay attention to this, you will have issues. If you guys like what you see, please hit the like button, get those subs going, get those notifications going. And I wanna do everything I can to keep this content rolling. Guys, we just hit 20,000 subs. I'm blown away. I'm seriously blown away. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. It's growing and the support is showing. And I really, really, I'm really, really thankful for it. Thanks guys.